Good to see y'all in the house of the Lord today. Appreciate you being here. Y'all make sure I'm on here before I get started. At least I think I am. It's good to see you. Good to be back in, in the house of the Lord. And especially on this Memorial Day's Eve, you might say. And uh, I tell you, so thankful for what God has done for us in our country. I know I say often about the, the problems in this, this country has. And, and, and they do have them, but it's the greatest place on earth to live. Uh, it's as close to heaven in, in this life as you'll ever get if you knew really what's going on around the world and, 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 and visit other places and see what they, what, what they live in. I tell you, it's this last trip I went on, I've been to Israel three times, and, and they, you know, it's just different than being here. I, mean, I, I really can't explain it. It's, it's, it's just different. This last trip I went on, we visited Mexico and, and Honduras, and it's pitiful. We, we are blessed people. We, we, you don't even realize how blessed you are. I, I saw a little young and fishing with a drink bottle and a hook and line. Young as it should have been in school during that time, fishing with that. And I, you know, I know that there's, everywhere you go, there's, there's things that's, there's fake. There's people to get you from. I understand that. But there's some legitimate people that, that's got problems. And these little young brother Norman were just fishing, and they was catching little old teeny fish, and, and, and you just thought they were catching whales. They were so excited. I, I really believe some of them just had done that. To eat. Now, you don't have to believe that, but I, I, I believe that they did. Um, they would run up and tie little flowers together and, 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 and to, to sell, to, to, make, to make money, small, small children, my grandchildren's age. And uh, they're sure they were just lived in the world they were trying to survive. You ride down the streets of what's supposed to be the city, and, and it, it would be like turning the clock back here 75, 80 years to see how, how they're living. They're living so far. We are blessed people, and, and I'm so thankful that we, we celebrate tomorrow being Memorial Day for those who pay the price that you and I might be able to enjoy what we have today. That we have freedom to sit in this house and worship Him today because of the price that men has paid Amen. for us. And I tell you, you need to be so thankful for our, for our military. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, they, they have. Um, throughout the years and years and generations and generations, they have fought for this country. 18 to 22 years old, uh, many, many of them, had a whole life ahead of them, but they never made it. But they died on a battlefield. So we might be able to enjoy just what we're doing today. To be able to do what we want to do and to be able to worship God freely. And I tell you, we're thankful for all of you that served. But, but I'm telling you, we, we, we ought to be so thankful for where we're at uh, in, in our, or for the country we live in. And be thankful and, and for that this morning. But anyway, it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. I won't stay on that. Matthew chapter 22, if you will. Matthew chapter 22. We're going to continue and, and going through this. Unless there will be some things I can explain this morning, but there will be some verses in these texts. I'll be honest with you, I have no idea of what to tell you. Uh, there's, things, there's things about the Bible I just can't explain. And not only can I, there ain't nobody can really explain them. Uh, some things that's going to happen, uh, but, or some things we'll read in the text. But I want to answer a question. Last week, I, somebody come to me after Sunday school and want to know what Matthew twenty two fourteen meant, or asked me my thoughts on twenty two fourteen. And I said, "Well, you know, I, I'm familiar with the verse." But I said, "Let me think on it this week, and I'll, I'll give you an answer on Sunday." And if you were here last week, we talked about parable. We talked about three parables, and uh, and one of them was about the the, the, the the parable of the wedding and the man come in without the wedding garment, which was the last one. He come out and, 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 and the, the king called him friend. How came us down here without a wedding garment on? And, and, and he was bound hand and foot and cast uh, in, into the lake of fire, or, or, or cast. And um, anyway, Matthew twenty two fourteen, Jesus finishes that parable and he says this, For many are called, but few are chosen. I put a lot of thought this week in that text, and this year, anything you read out in the Bible, I don't care what it is, I don't care what verse it is, you cannot pull it out of context. Right. It don't work. You can make it believe anything you want it to believe if you pull it out of context. So he, in the context of what Jesus is saying, and, and that's all I got to go on, in the context of what he's saying, if you remember the parable, there was a lot of people called. They were, they, they were his own people, to do it, they were called. There was other people. Everybody was too busy. But the word chosen here really means elect. So many are called, 
But only a few is going to accept the call that Jesus puts on their life to, to be saved and to come to know Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of their life. Many are called. In other words, there's a lot of people that, that's, had, that's had the invitation, hey, to come to Christ. But only a few have accepted him. And I, I, in that context, it, it, it can't mean anything else within the context of what it's saying. Uh, it, it's gotten because that's all Jesus was talking about. They were called. Mister, there, there's a lot of people that are sitting in church today, they'll receive the calling. But they won't accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior their life and be saved and be chosen. Be elect. I, I mean, sometimes the English language, uh, in other words, if they'd have put the word elect in there, it wouldn't have been near as difficult to explain as it was chosen. Because when you think chosen, just because of the way we think, we think it's something different. But it's not. If you do study them in its context, Mister, there's a lot of people that may even sit in this church that's being called, but they're not truly being chosen because they've not truly accepted Christ. Mister, you can't do it any other way. There's one, one name under heaven whereby men must be saved. His name is Jesus. There's only one man went to the cross of Calvary and died for my sins and your sins and the sins of this world. And his name is Jesus. And without him, you will perish. And we'll get to that in the end of this lesson this morning. But, but without him, you will perish. You will die lost in your sins. There is coming the day. You will live again after death, whether it be in the resurrection of Jesus Christ or whether it be eternally in hell. But you will live again after this life. I'm going to get to that in a few minutes. I, I, I tell you, the more I study it, the more I, the more I feel confused, so, so to speak, when it comes to talking about life after death. Maybe you don't think about life after death, but I do often. But what, what's it going to be like? I mean, those questions I can't answer. But we'll get there in a few minutes. But uh, look, look back in, in Matthew 22, 15. And, and let's do this first, and then, then we'll get on in, in, into that. So remember, this is the last week of Jesus' life on earth. I mean, it's his last week before, before he would go to the cross and die for our sins. And everybody was out to get Jesus. And we see in this text, or in this verse, it says, Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. In other words, they were trying to trip him up. They were trying to get him to say something other that would, would, um, would cause the people to want to, to kill him. you got to realize, it's still at this point, they had just two or three days ago, they cried, Hosanna, save now, the multitude. In other words, there was a, lots and th thousands and thousands of people that were, 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 at, were, were believing in him at this point. So they got, they got to do something to calm down his pain. they got to do something to stop him from growing like he's going. They, they, and, and that's where they're at. So they tried to uh, entangle him in his talk. Now you got to realize he was enemies with all these, or all these people were enemies with one another, like the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and, and, and the Herodians. All these people didn't like one another. But you heard, the old, you heard the old saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So they all come together because they had one common thing, and that was to be against Jesus. So they all of them took their turn at trying to, trying to do something to him. So they come and tried to entangle him in his talk. Now verse 16. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. In other words, boy, they buttered him up, making it sound like he's the greatest thing on earth. Although he was, they were just making it sound like But they didn't mean anything they were saying. They were just they were just singing his praises falsely, like so many other people that sing his praises falsely. They don't really know him. They just think they know him. And that's kind of what's happening here. Verse 17. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? Remember, I've told you over and over and over that the people were looking for a Messiah. And you got, I, I've told you, that I, I've showed you verses, and I'm going to show you another one today that I've already showed you before, but I'm going to tell you again. But there's verse after verse that pointed to Jesus being the Messiah. But they just would not accept it. Again, I've told you over and over that the, 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 the it was. The feeling was high in the nation. I mean, they were looking for a Messiah anytime. They thought John the Baptist was a Messiah. Uh, many of them thought, many of them believed that Jesus was a Messiah. But nothing pointed to John the Baptist like it did to Jesus. This is another uh, verse or another text in the Bible that proved that Jesus was who he was. You got to realize, until Jesus came, the, the, until Jesus came, the, the, the Jews, although they were under captivity, they still maintained law within their, within, their, within their community. In other words, even when they were in Babylon, they still had laws that they, you know, they still had priests and they had all these, they still had those things. But you got to realize, uh, Rome had been a world leader for some time, but Caesar Augustus is really just at the birth of Jesus 
really took full control of the Jewish people. Up until that time, they could, they could, they could, they could uh, uh, do capital punishment. Up until the time when Caesar Augustus come in, anybody know that name? Biblically. It's here. Everybody had to go to their own house to be, to be taxed. Now, we say it's a census. Well, it is, but it's a tax. Yeah. It was a, it, and it, it, it was the first time it ever happened. In other words, everything was pointing to, to Jesus. Now, now, if I didn't tell you this, Chad, can you go to Genesis 49.10? Genesis 49.10. So God told them in the Old Testament that they would maintain this law until the Messiah come. And, and, and like I say, Caesar Augustus took over. He, he, he was a nephew of, of Julius Caesar, I believe, but Julius, he didn't. Uh, Julius Caesar didn't have the power that Augustus had. If you read history, if you believe what history said, he did not have the power. Caesar Augustus jumped on it and was able to, uh, to do what the other leaders before him couldn't do. There were other world leaders, don't get me wrong, before this time, but not like Caesar Augustus made it. I mean, it was pretty much totally everything in the known world was under his power, and everybody, and, 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 and everybody was going to pay tax. He was going to take a census of all his people. But anyway... To make it short, I hope you get this. It's, it's not too hard. I don't want to make it hard. So when and when when Jacob had Jacob had twelve sons, and they were in bondage in Egypt. You remember Jacob come, and, and all the other brothers of Joseph come. Jacob on his dying bed blessed his twelve children. He, he blessed his twelve children. Um, they, he he told each one of them what was going to happen. Well, when he gets to Judah, he says this. He says, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. Shiloh is the name for the Messiah. It's the name for the Messiah. In other words, all these laws that I just talked about they were going to have, they were going to be able to maintain law from generation. Even though they were in captivity, they would be able to maintain law from generation to generation until the Messiah come. Well, when Jesus was born in, in, in Bethlehem, that was the end of it. When they registered, that was the end of it. Shiloh was come. They, 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 would be, they didn't have the law to, 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 to do what they were doing uh, that, uh, just years before that. They, they didn't have it. And he says, the scepter which means government, which means power, which means authority. He said, the scepter shall not depart from Judah. Jesus was what? The line of the tribe of Judah. Nor a lawgiver. In other words, somebody it, it, uh, um, from between his feet until Shiloh comes. Shiloh means a few things. Peace. I mean, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. I mean, everything pointed to who Jesus was. Everything. And this year, this is kind of a dust. We don't really maybe understand it, but listen, the Jewish readers that was looking for a Messiah, they knew this verse. They knew all the verses that, uh, that surrounded the Messiah. They would have knew those things. I mean, there's a lot of things about our nation we know. It, it wouldn't be any different with them. Uh, but, it, but it means peace. Uh, and he, like I say, he was the Prince of Peace. It means deliverer. Hey, don't you know today that he can still deliver? And he, he was going to deliver. He was going to deliver Israel, but just not in the way they recognized it. I mean, everything pointed to who he was. So when they brought this, when they brought, go back to, to Matthew. When they brought this coin, they were they wanted to trip Jesus up and, and, and have Jesus say something against Caesar because they didn't have the power to put him to death. But if he went against the Roman government, the Roman government would put him to death. And, and they wanted Rome to do what they couldn't do. But you got to realize, right prior to Jesus' time, they would have had, if Jesus would have come or somebody like him, they would have had the power of their own government to put him to death. Because the scepter hadn't departed. But when Jesus came and was born in Bethlehem, the scepter passed. It was no longer there. That's why they were, that's why they were completely... Uh, destroyed and burned in 70 A.D. Just a few years, just a few years, 30 some years after Jesus had, had ascended back to heaven after his crucifixion, had ascended back because they, they, they would have no more power because the scepter was gone. Everything would have pointed. Uh, and so they are asking him, what thinks thou is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? In other words, if he had said no, then the Roman government would have had him uh, arrested and, 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 and crucified him anyway uh, for rebellion. But if he said yes, 
All the followers that he had weren't going to want to follow him anymore because they didn't like taxes. No more than you do. But you got to realize it was a brand new thing in their day. I mean, all of you, if you paid taxes all your life in some shape, form, or fashion, yeah, but it weren't so with them. They remember the time when you didn't pay taxes. I know they had temple tax and things like that, but they didn't have tax as in as they knew it, as, as didn't happen until Jesus came. They, they, they didn't have that. So, the, so they're trying to trick him. Verse, verse 18. But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt me? Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? I mean, he, he called them out. Verse 19. Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. Keep going. And he said, Whose is the Im this image and superscription or inscription on it? Verse 21. They say unto him, Caesar's. Good, great answer that Jesus would give them. Yeah. Then saith he unto, unto them, Render unto, therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are of God. And today we're still doing the same thing. We're still rendering to Caesar what belongs to him and, 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 and to God. Hopefully, hopefully you are what, what belongs to God. Everything pointed that he was who he said he was. Everything pointed that he was Messiah. I mean, I, we've, we've talked about verses after verses over the last couple of years that, that pointed to the Messiah. And this is just one more you can add to it. Shiloh has come. Let's see what verse we in. All right, let's go to the next verse. And when they heard these words, they marveled and left him and went. There we are, next verse, 23, is it? All right. This is the next few verses. Just, I'll be honest with you, just, it's, it's difficult to me. Again, as I told you before, I thought about life after death. I do what, what's happening over there. Uh, what would it be like? And I don't, I don't really have no good answers for you, but I, I'll just share a few things. The only thing I can tell you is what I know the Bible says, and I'll share a few things with you out of the Bible. It says, The same day came to him the Sadducees. And the Sadducees was a group of people who did not believe in life after death, did not believe in the resurrection. They were, because, and the reason they didn't believe in the resurrection because they were, they were thinking physically and, and, and not spiritually. Um, and anyway, we say that there is no resurrection. And I asked him, verse 24. Saying, Mo, uh, uh, Master Moses said, If a man die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now, under the law, they was exactly right. That's exactly what happened. If you know anything about the Bible, if you marry, if a man and woman married and, and, the, and the man died and, and didn't have any children, the brother was to marry that, that wife. Everything, don't, the problem is, is, is because of life, the way we live it right now, that's all we know. We can't explain the future because we, we live in a, a, a world full of sin, a world where we need a Savior that, uh, that went to the cross and died for us. We, we just can't comprehend life after death. Like, like, we just can't. And I, nobody else thinks that. They can tell you anything they want to tell you, but you, you, nobody really knows other than what the Scripture tells us. I will tell you this, we'll think different. We'll think different, but let's keep going. Go to, uh, go to the next verse. Now, there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased, having no issue or no children, left his wife unto his brother. Keep going. Likewise, the second and the third unto a seventh. So they, they're, they're, they're saying if a, if a man marries a wife and they have no children and he's got six brothers or they seven of them, and, and, and then she marries the second one, and they have no children. He dies, he marries his You see what the, the problem is with this, they're looking at it like you and I would look at it. They're looking at it not, not uh, spirit, uh, spiritually, but they're looking at it from a physical standpoint. Keep going, next verse. And last of all, the woman died, 28. Therefore in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. In other words, I mean, from, a, from, a, from a physical standpoint like you and I, I guess it's a fair question per se. I don't want to take it up for them, but it's kind of a fair. Who, 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 we're, the problem is we're not thinking spiritually. We're not thinking what life is going to be like after death. Next verse. 
Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the Scriptures, nor the power of God. We all err. We, we, don't, we really don't know that what God is truly capable of. Adam and Eve was in a garden. I don't know how many years I've speculated and told you before. I, from the time frame of, I've thought 30 years or so. In fact, I told you one time, I thought exactly length of time Jesus was in, was on this earth. I told you that one time, and I, I feel confident in that answer for different reasons, the 33, 33 and a half years. But the years they were in, their life was different than what it is now. They were both in the garden. They were both had no clothes on. Neither one of them knew they were naked. There's nobody in 2023 can walk around without no clothes on unless their mind's gone and they just ain't got one and walk around and tell you you don't have clothes on. You can't do that. It's not possible. As a baby, you, 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 you did maybe more, more so than, than now. But there's a world of difference in the mind of a baby and an adult. They were, they were in a different form. And I, I can't explain it other than just the power of God. We'll, 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 be, we'll be in a different mindset. I know we, that people get married and they stay married a long time. And we talk about love. I, I understand. And I, I can't explain it. I, I can't. There's things I, I can't explain. The only thing I know is, is to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. And I do know that Paul said he had a desire to go be with Christ, which was far better but he said, but he had to stay for a little while longer because of the gospel. He, he had to stay longer. I, I just know there's a better life on the other side when that day comes. To tell you how it's going to be, I don't know. Jesus, what's the next verse? For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. I mean, that, 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 that's all of God. I mean, what, what, can I, what can I add to that? They, 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 they don't marry. They, they're not given in marriage. After we, we, we can't think that way because that's the lifestyle we've always lived. We've lived in a, a, a lifestyle where we got married and we had children and we had grandchildren or whatever, and we died, and the next generation just picked up and went on and on and on. But he says, but they, they are as the angels of God in heaven. I can tell you that, that, that you would eat of some type because if you look through the Bible, the first time we, uh, I say the second time we ever see angels, I think it is. Uh, maybe the second time uh, they come to Abraham. He has two or three. He has two or three angels come, and he cooks and kills a fatty calf and, 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 and cooks and cooks for them, and they eat. I'm just I, I don't know. Just, they, they eat. They eat food just like you did. I can't. I don't know what it'll be like in the in, in the resurrection. Don't know. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute. What Revelation says, but they they eat and, and with Lot they come down with Lot. Two angels went in the city. They had power to strike men blind. The men, the men, the men were, were crazy and, uh, and, and, and Sodom and Gomorrah and wanted sexual relations with the two angels. And, and Lot fought them off as long as he could. And the angels, pulled him, the angels reached out the door and pulled Lot inside and smoked the crowd with blindness where they couldn't find the, the door to do that. But they eat that night with Lot. And then the next morning they picked Lot up and took him out of the city and they destroyed, they destroyed the city. I mean, that's all I got. They said we'd be like the angels. The angels were, were created to worship God. Man, according to the Bible, was created a little lower. Yeah. According to the Bible, was created a little lower than the angels. But the angels worship God. You don't realize that and there's only two types of angels in the in, in Bible. They, there's fallen angels, and there's elect angels. And what I can find in Scripture, only two, only two types of angels. You don't realize that all the... The, the angels and stuff, or the, you want to call them demons, whatever you might want to call them, uh, that, that Satan has. Well, once in heaven, if you believe what the Bible says, and once in, I mean, it, it, uh, it, that, but it, I, I believe myself to be twice as many of the good angels as they are bad, and I get that when, he, when, the, when the tail drew a third from the, from the, from the, from the heaven. That's just what I know. But God created all of those, but they turned against God. And they're fallen. I don't want to be a fallen angel. I want to be one of the elect angels. I, I don't know what life will be like after death. Go to Revelation chapter 20, and I believe verse 1. No, it ain't verse 1. Let me see which one it is. Let me get over there myself. I 
Let's go to Revelation 20, 2011. We're just going to read a little bit of scriptures here. There is life after death, as I've already said. Again, you'll, you'll, you'll either be, uh, there's only two choices. You'll either be in heaven or you'll be in hell. There's no, no other choices. And, and Revelation chapter 20, John is writing uh, what he sees in heaven. And, and, and he says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. This, this, this is at the end. Now this, this, this is where, where lost people will be. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their, keep going, to, according to their work. So there'll be a day, there'll be a time when this life's over and it's at the end. There, there'll come a day that, that those that are lost will stand before a great white throne judgment. And we'll, 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 they'll stand before him and they'll open the book. I, my thinking, the books of the Bible, I, I, I can't answer that. I mean, that's just what I think. Uh, it says the books were open and, and they were judged out of what's written. Listen, we're going to be judged on that word we're holding in front of us today. Whether you're lost, whether you're saved, I don't know. But you better know that you're saved. When you leave here today, you need to know that you know that you know that you're saved. Because one day that, that book you're holding, you're reading, will be the very thing that judges you. And it says, and also that another book was open. Is, that, is there another verse in the wrong place? And I saw the dead small and great stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. So there's books with an S, meaning more than one, which mean, could mean the 66 books of the Bible. But then there's another book that will be open. And if your name's not found written in the book, you're going to spend eternity in heaven. Some people say there's two things about that book. I, I, don't, I don't argue scripture with people. Some people say there's a book of life and everybody that's written, everybody that's born into this life, their name is written in a book. And at the end, if they're not saved, their name is blotted out. I, 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 I wouldn't argue the point. They scripture, I can, I, I, can, I can say there's scripture that could go along with that. But it don't make any difference whether, you, whether you, if, it's not, if it's blotted out or whether it's never there. I mean, right. what difference does it make? If you ain't going, you're not going. And then there's the other concept that only that those that are born again are written down in, in, in the book. But if your name's not in the book, you will spend eternity in hell. But I'm glad that's not the, the end of it. Is that all of that chapter? All right, go to 21. 21, 1 through 5, I think it is. Now, the great white throne judgment will be where people that are lost, people that don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their life. And if you're here today and you don't know him and you die lost, you will stand at that judgment. And you will be, uh, you will be judged out of what's written in that book. But then, John says in Revelation 21, 1, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Man, I can't imagine that. Jesus said he went away to prepare a place for me. He said, if I come, I will receive you unto myself where I am. There you may be also. He's away right now preparing a place for those that's being born again, those that's washed in the blood, those that know him as Lord and Savior of their life. And he said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. I mean, it's just brand new. Go next verse. I don't know what to tell you. It's just going to be different. Verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, appeared as a bride adorned for her husband. I mean, think back to, to, to your wedding day, and you, if you can remember in the church, and you stand and you see your wife for the first time standing in the back of the church, uh, you know, dressed up and whatever the case may be. That's what John says. He's saying, listen here, I, I realize people get divorces, and I realize things goes on in people's life. I, I understand. But for the most of the time, well, no, most of the time, that's probably one of the happiest moments in their life in the beginning is when he sees his bride for the first time. And that's what he said in this text. 
when he sees heaven, when he sees this new heaven, he's really coming down for the first time. That's the happens to be the place you get this right. And if you saw it, it was like a bride adorned for her husband. Verse 3. And I heard a great voice of heaven. A great voice. That means mega also again. Mega, mega voice. Saying, behold, with the tabernacle of God is with men. I don't know what it'll be like when we get older about the marriage and the children. I, I can't answer that. But I know that Christ will be there. God will be there. And he heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them. They shall be his people. And God himself (laughs) shall be with them. And be their God. Next verse. And God shall wipe all tears. From their eyes. I don't know what it'll be like. But I know this here says that God will wipe all tears away. There should be no more death. Neither sorrow. Nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former thing. Are passed away. It's just going to be a life like you could, like I could never describe to you what's on the other side. But you've got to be born again. You've got to be washed in the blood. You've got to know him as Lord and Savior of your life. Amen. It will work no other way. If you don't, if you don't know him, you'll stand in that other, you'll stand at the great white throne of judgment. And you'll be cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. Let me get over here. I'm going to read the Verse, go to the next verse. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. I, I, that, that's, what I, that's all I know to tell you. Me, me, all, all, it, things will be different. It'll be new. All, and he said to me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. Verse 6. And he said unto me, It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Verse 7. He that inherits, he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Now let's flip over. I know I got close. I ain't got just a couple minutes left. Let's flip over to Revelation 22, verse 1. And I'll read, uh, I don't know, five or six verses, maybe five verses. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal. I mean, it, it was just, we, we can't imagine, it's perfectly clear. For seeing out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Verse 2. In the midst of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruit, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves were for the healing of the nations. The tree of life was in the garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. It disappeared in Eden, and we don't see it no more. It disappeared. We don't see it anymore until here. And I don't know what the other side will be like. I, I, I can't answer that, but I'm just telling you what it says here. It says that they would eat this tree of life and the leaves were for the healing of the nations. I mean, I, I want to tell you, I know exactly what it says. Verse 3. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Verse, next verse. And they shall see his face, and the name shall be in their forehead. Keep going. And there shall be no night there, and no need for candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth him light, and they shall reign forever and ever. I can't explain a life without a sun and a moon and stars. And neither can you, because that's all you've ever known. But there'll be no need for the sun or the moon or whatever, because Jesus himself 
will be the light to the city. We read on, on read on down, and we, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to stop here in a minute. But if you read on down, the city life four square. Some say it's fifteen hundred miles square. This way, that way, that way. I can't. It has twelve foundations. It has twelve gates of pearl. I mean, I, we just can't imagine. That fifteen hundred miles is like the distance from Florida to Maine. Square. Up, out, in the direction you want to go. Somebody smarter than me said one time, <laughs> what are they now, seven or eight billion people in the world? I mean, who, who knows, seven something or is it eight? Anybody know? used to be seven something. I don't know exactly what it is now. Anyway, some, one of these writers from years back gave an estimation. If there was 100 billion people that lived from Adam until the coming of Christ, if there was now, 100 billion people, and 20% of them were saved, I don't know if it's going to be that many, but let's just use it for an analogy. 20% were saved. But that would give, with, with the dimensions that they give in Revelation, and 20% and, and of them were saved. Just to give you an idea. It give you like seventy five acre lots a piece per se, if you if that makes sense to you. Just just an idea, nothing nothing biblical. Just, just an idea how what heaven will, will, will be like the streets of gold. We just we just can't imagine what's on the other side. My my, my vocabulary won't allow me to express to you. Only thing I can tell you is it'll be better than this side. That, that's all I know. I, that, that's all, all all I can tell you. Um, I know when the, when the rich man looked up, he saw he saw Abraham, and he knew who Abraham was. And I'm not disputing that. I ain't saying we won't know one another, but the relationship will be different. You won't marry, and you won't be given in marriage, but you'll be as angels. I, whether we'll be all considered one another brothers, I can't answer brothers and sisters. I can't answer that. Don't know. But it won't matter because it's going to make all things new. It won't be like it was on this side. And then we'll have a body to where we'll never. Uh, We'll, we'll never die again. When Jesus, after the resurrection, go to his disciples, they knew exactly who he was. He had a nail scar still in his hand. What we, you remember when he talked to Thomas? Um, you know, he said, Thomas, you know, thrust your hand. He said, let me touch you. And, you know, and uh, anyway, Thomas touched him and said, my Lord, my God. And, and he told Thomas, he said, you know, blessed because you've seen, but he said, more blessed are those that have believed and yet not seen. Even more blessed when you can believe it and not be seen it. I don't know what it's like on the other side, church. I really don't. And I, the only thing I know to tell you is it's better to trust God. Because I'm telling you, they aren't. There's only two places to be, heaven or hell. And, and, and if you leave this world, earth unprepared to meet Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, you will die and spend eternity in hell. Amen. And in hell, I know we, the rich man, he, he remembered. He remembered he had brothers. I mean, he was in hell and he remembered he had brothers. I, again, there's things I can't explain. But the power of God changes everything. God said his ways was so much above our ways and his thoughts so much higher than our thoughts. We couldn't even imagine what God, what is it? Uh, there's one more place. I was going, let me see if I wrote it down. Because if I didn't, I don't remember where it's at right off. Let's do one more thing, if you don't mind. I, 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 told my, I was supposed to have been done three minutes ago. Uh, I'm going to close with this. So 1 Corinthians 2, 9, if you'll pull that up. 1 Corinthians 2 9. This come out of Isaiah 6 4, I believe. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things God hath prepared for them that love him. We just can't imagine. Man, we just can't imagine what's waiting on the other side for us today. And I, I encourage you to be ready. Anybody? I'm going to close here. I'm going to pick back up next week, probably Matthew 20, 23. Anybody got a question or comment quickly?
Sure. But I'm just saying that once we get down to those real things, it's hard to figure out. We might have figured out a lot of life up till then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Amen. Anybody else? All right. May God bless me. Love you till next Sunday.